In a time of relative peace and quiet, newspapers were once again full of carnage. Catastrophic train accidents were on the rise as the number of trains in the country grew in size and quantity and with increasing speed. As the body count escalated, a clear solution was needed. Westinghouse was said to have been personally affected by a terrible train crash in 1866, which motivated him to solve the problem. <laughs> Nearly anyone could make trains bigger and faster, but nobody had devised a working solution to stop them quickly. At that time, stopping a train was a complicated, inefficient ordeal. In those days, for example, on a freight train, the brakeman literally rode on top of the freight cars all day long. When the engineer gave a blast of the whistle to put down the brakes, they'd jump up, turn the wheel on that car, and then run down that car, jump to the next car, run down the car to turn the brakes on the next car, and uh, that, again, plied the brakes to the, to the wheels. So stopping a train was a very long, jerky kind of a process. And by the way, uh, the brakemen had an extremely dangerous job. Many of them were killed and injured. As you can imagine, the conditions, riding on top of those freight cars all day long, rain, snow, whatever. A speeding train could take up to nearly two miles to come to a complete stop. Not only were the lives of brakemen at risk when jumping from car to car on a moving train, but anything getting in the way of a roaring locomotive was almost certainly destroyed. Westinghouse felt that if an immediate powerful application of brakes were available, that these horrible accidents could be avoided. Men had been tinkering with train braking concepts for years. There were other patents dealing with brakes, but George Westinghouse was the only man to put old and new ideas together into a complete workable combination. In fact, one key ingredient was discovered out of thin air. George Westinghouse had been reading a new scientific magazine and there was an article that caught his attention on a French company building a tunnel through the Mount Cenis Mountain in the Alps. It caught his attention. It was no ordinary tunnel, you see. It was eight and a half miles long. And it says they were having great difficulty until two new inventions came along. An Englishman had invented what he called a hammer drill bit, and an Italian had invented what he called an air motor. And it caught George's attention because the article said at that time that the pipe going back into the mountain with six atmospheres of air to drive the hammer drill bit to drill the holes for the dynamite was over 3,000 feet long. At that point in time, he thought, surely, if they can drive a hammer drill bit into solid rock 3,000 feet away using air, he could be able to use air to drive the brakes on a train. Many people thought he was crazy because who in their right mind would envision a roaring train being stopped by the wind? But that didn't stop him. George Westinghouse Jr. was issued his first patent for the air brake on April 13, 1869, at 22 years of age. 